Welcome to the video tutorial on using the ENG Studio's Clash Locator software. In this video, we will go over the steps to create an XML file that you upload to the Clash Locator website. What you see on screen is Autodesk Navisworks Manager. For this demo, I'm using 2012, but the Clash Locator will work for 2011 and 2010. Now I've already loaded a model, and in that model I've already pre-configured a few batch Clash runs, as you can see here. I didn't do anything out of the norm um, to set up and run the rules or selecting my files. All of that process is very common and can stay the same that you've done um, with your typical process of locating and running clashes in the past. Um, but where we will step out of the norm is the next and last step, and that's where we start to write our files. Um, for the sake of using the Clash Locator software, what we need to do is generate an XML file. Now this XML file um, needs to include all of the batches if you want to have um, all of them in one batch locator pile. Uh, so what you do here is simply choose all test combined. So you make sure that's selected. Um, and you also definitely want to make sure that you've got the XML reporting format selected. All the rest of this stays pretty much the standard, and you hit Write Report. Choose your uh, directory tree that you want to put your XML file to. Hit Save, and it will start generating a report for you. Now the report has been written to the location we selected previously, and is now available for upload to the website, as you can see here, XML file. Um, so now I'm going to cruise up to the Clash Tool software website and uh, go ahead and log in. I've already logged in once, uh, created a user account, and uh, so I'll be able to log in immediately. Um, tool will recognize me, verify my username and password, and then I get to choose the uh, tool that I want to use. Now once I'm here, I can start to customize uh, the output file format that I'm looking for. Um, so I can actually choose which designator I want uh, the tool to create for each of my clashes. Um, I'm kind of partial to this one. And then there's an alternate uh, option here where you can include or exclude hyperlinking. Uh, for right now, that feature is uh, not enabled on the website. so. You can leave it on or you can turn it off. Uh, now the next step is to very simply choose your XML file and uh, you select choose file and then you upload your XML file by selecting it wherever you wrote it to. Then you hit generate 3D locator. Uh, you'll get a little message down here once the file is uploaded depending on the size of the file and also the uh, speed of your local in internet connection, um, but you'll get a nice little message telling you that the uh, file has been received and uh, is being processed uh, by our servers. Uh, there's also a backup email which you will get um, to your email account that lets you know that the file has also been processed um, and received and that you will soon be receiving uh, your file for download. Now some time has passed since uh, I submitted my file. Um, because it was a big one, it might take a little bit longer to uh, process by the system. But I should get an email uh, letting me know that the file has been uh, processed and is ready to download. And that email should look something like this. It has the name of the file, um, your name, which is tied to your user. And you just simply click the URL and it will download the file to the location you choose on your network. Once the file is downloaded, it is now ready for reference back into either your Revit project file, um, back into your AutoCAD 3D projects, or back even into Bentley systems. Basically anything that will read a 3D DWG file um, now can reference the 3D Clash Locator file back into the active project um, for use. 
Now for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to simply reference this locator back into this existing model file that we generated the report from, uh, just for a quick and easy presentation. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to Navisworks, exit out of the Clash locator. Um, I'm going to append that file in and just attach it. And uh, it, since it's a kind of a big file, it might take it a little bit to process and uh, bring that file back into our existing model uh, with all the clashes located. And so now the uh, model has been referenced back into our existing file, as you can see here. I'm going to just uh, hide the model geometry. And if you can see on screen, we have a pile of little clashes that are all now located with that designator that we chose earlier. Now the color coding is all based off of um, is all based off of the batch that we chose, um, you know, or all of the separate batches that were in that project file. So each batch has a representative different file or different color and it's even busted into unique element trees inside the selection set so you can individually turn on or off your batches um, to make it very obvious uh, where your files are where your project might have a lot of clashes or not have a lot of clashes um, I'll turn that model back on Set the transparency so it's very obvious. Let that render. And uh, I'm going to just very quickly zoom in on one of those clashes. And there we go. Now again, I'm referencing this back into Navisworks for a demonstration, but the 3D AutoCAD DWG file that is generated from the locator can be referenced back into, like I said, Revit, AutoCAD, Bentley, um, any of the uh, BIM authoring platforms that are on the street at this time can read uh, native DWG files uh, back into their source. Um, so that's how you use the tool. This is the output and uh, we hope you enjoy. Thank you.